I think we have a quorum chair yes. more. Great. All right. Uh, fantastic. All right. Good evening, everybody, or late afternoon. Um, I'd like to call the Water and Sewer Board meeting to order and start with agenda item 3A, approval of the minutes from our October 8th meeting. Can we take roll? Uh, we could do that if we wanted to follow normal procedures. Uh, right. Please, if you take roll, I would appreciate it. Okay. Uh, board member Bariski? Present. Board member Freeman? Present. Board member Jolie? Present. Board member Mercia? Present. Board member Ridley? Present. Council member Russell? Council member Ward? Present. Mayor Sierra? Present. Vice Chair Hovnick? Chair Moore? Present. Great, thank you. Uh, next up, uh, approval of the minutes from the October 8th meeting. Can I get a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Wonderful. Any discussion, edits, questions? All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? My right, motion carries. Uh, next up is the pu public forum. Brenda, do we have anyone tonight? Um, we do not. Great. All right. Thank you very much. Moving on. Uh, new business items. Five uh, A. Uh, first of all, I would. Um, it. It. Uh, Chuck Habernick has um, had to let his go. Let his um, seat go, um, and. So it's time, uh, time to recognize that. Uh, so I want to pause and thank uh, Chuck's not here, but we'll send send a letter. Uh, Chuck service with the board um, goes back twenty four years now. Uh, he was first appointed February seventh, two thousand. Um, so even predates me by a couple years. Uh, Chuck <laughs> is. Uh, so Chuck literally has been here the whole time that uh, I have served and always appreciated uh, what he brought to the table. Um, and we, we wish him well. Um, but um, as you guys know, I did ask Ty to step in and be an interim vice chair uh, while we were waiting for things to be finalized. And at this point, uh, I would like to recommend that the board um, approve moving tie from interim vice chair to the um, vice chair position that Chuck held. Uh, and so with that, I'd like to, I'd like to get a motion to that effect. I move the motion. I second. Right. Any discussion? All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank, right. you. Thank, thank you. Um, uh, on a related note, um, then I'd also like the board to um, move Cami as an from an alternate board member uh, to fill uh, Chuck's vacant board seat. No, it's not the vice chair position, but just the the seat. So this would uh, uh, Cami would move up and fill his role. For the remainder of his term, which was through February 1 of 26, uh, and then she'd be eligible for reappointment after that. Uh, so again, I'd, I'd like the board to, I'd like to get a motion um, to move Cami into that permanent role, if someone would like to do that for us. I move. Second. Great. Any further discussion? All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Um, to both of you, thank you for your um, service and elevated service to the board. Um, this, uh, uh, Anyway, I pre appreciate it. And we'll move on now to item uh, 5C. Um, and it's uh, 29 subparts. <laughs> so, uh, I'm sorry, is it uh, Utilities Engineering Supervisor Cliff Stevens will take over? 
Yes, I'm Cliff Stevens. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, and yeah, there's a bunch of agreements here for uh, utility crossings and for temporary construction easements that we're looking for approval on. Yeah, it's right here. Okay. This is what's showing behind you. Um, so before we get into that, I just wanted to give you an overall background of where we've been down here over the last couple of years. Um, you can see these are the two developments, Santa Fe Park and River Park. River Park is on the north, which is to your right on this. Um, so Mineral Pours is property on the north, uh, Santa Fe on the east. And so you can see in blue here where the historic city ditch went right through this development. Um, so we've already relocated part of that as part of the Santa Fe Park development. Um, they're currently down there starting to grade to relocate um, through this commercial area, which is the River Park development. And then in purple is what we'll be discussing tonight, and that's the McCall and Drake line that they're relocating and a number of crossings of that. And so this is the first thing that happened down there. It was at Santa Fe Park, and this was done by toll. And you can see that they um, relocated the ditch right along Santa Fe there. And we, um, well, I don't know how many of you were here, but the board saw two crossings at that point. Um, and an easement agreement with TB Angeling. And I guess I should go back is that the commercial, there's a lot of different entities involved. The commercial area is being developed by Evergreen Mineral. And so when you see that name, that's the commercial development on the north side. T Ball is developing the apartments that's on the southeast side. And then Toll is kind of the overall development, but they're also doing the um, condos and uh, um, townhomes that are on the south west side. So those are the three developers and then we have Excel, Southwest Metro um, and some of these developers that are doing these crossings. So anyway this happened about a year ago um, they relocated this ditch it's functional um, and operating and the next step it's happening right now. You want to switch it? Um, yep, I it's, do. No, no, I got it. It's that's what's showing. Sorry. Do you want me to go back a slide? No, I'm good. Okay. Um, so this is happening right now. So grading down here, and we uh, approved uh, in June these roadway and irrigation crossings for Nickel Street, which would be a major intersection to Santa Fe. And I expect this construction to be done within the next month or two, depending on how things go down there. And what we're looking at tonight is... Okay, I got it. Um, and drain line. I'm not sick of my computer. So I'm <laughs> my notes. Um, and so this one, there's some vertical and some horizontal realignment that they needed to do. So. Um, up on the west side, that's where it's mostly vertical alignment, and you can see where the horizontal alignment that took place closer to McClellan. And so here's where our 29 agreements come in. Um, and I'm ready to move again. Okay. <laughs> it's on the next one. Um, so here's where the 29 agreements come in. Um, you can see in the general area, um, we have Excel, we have Toll, Southwest Metro. Um, so this is all for irrigation, landscape drain, storm drain, gas, water, sanitary, pretty much everything you can think of is going to be crossing our line here. Um, some of them are below them, some of them are above them. We looked at all of them and made sure we have enough clearance and that um, everything's going to work with it. Um, the reason there's kind of a weird number is we have 15 crossing agreements, and typically there's a a temporary construction agreement that are associated with those crossing agreements. However, there's one XL line that's already existing, so there's not a temporary construction easement on that one. So there you go. Do you have any questions? Well, I'm sorry, I'm not too practical um, for this, but like, can you just kind of enlighten me with this idea? Like, you have all these lines going through. So this is part of the 29 agreements and all of that, that you have to make sure there's certain distance apart from each other. 
and, and then you have people connect and you didn't connect and all of that and that's work. We don't, so we do not need to disconnect or disconnect anything. The lines that are underneath, they're laying those before they relocate this line. Or they'll dig under, but this they're is already pre existing. Excuse me. They're already pre existing, but they're already here. But you have to dig around them, correct? <clears throat> is that you they have to dig under them in some cases. We still need to keep our line, our existing line active while they do all of this. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, we have looked at them to make sure that everything is constructible and that if we ever need to maintain our drain line, that we're able to do that without interfering with, with their utilities, line. hopefully. What these agreements provide for is that, is that it basically states they understand they're in our easement and that they're encroaching our easement. So if something would happen that we were to go in there and accidentally break one of their lines, that we would not be responsible for it. It's their responsibility in our easement. Thank you, Roger. Any further questions? Uh, okay. Um, Uh, can I get a, man, it's just so tempting to read each one of these from start to finish. <laughs> I'm resisting it. Uh, can I get a, mo a motion? Um, can I get a motion to recommend that city council approve by ordinance water and sewer board agenda items 5C Roman numeral one through 5C Roman numeral 29 as written. So moved. <laughs> well seconded. Any further discussion? Um, I'll ask a question. I think it was already answered um, implicitly. Um, again, these are routine. The city's um, just confirming these. These are the these are the routine requests. The city's confirmed that our interests are protected, um, and there's nothing particularly unique about these situations uh, relative to what we you know do par for the course so to speak and that's correct we've done many of these in different areas to cross city ditch and we've got an agreement on every crossing that we've done perfect thank and you I'll very much uh, chairman, this is Sarah. i'll just add that this has been reviewed by city's legal as well as our water rights legal so it's gone through both um both of them to, to ensure that that's exactly right. Our, our rights are protected because this is a piece of our groundwater infrastructure. Perfect. Thank you very much. Any further discussion? All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion carries. Um, moving on to item 5D. Uh, Sarah, I think you get the mic. I do. Yes. So this item is a supplemental budget request. Um, it is not for an additional appropriation. It is actually a transfer of funds from the sewer fund, enterprise fund to the water enterprise fund. Uh, so a little bit of background. Um, the American Recovery Plan Act uh, was adopted in 2021, which was COVID relief. It was $1.9 trillion um, in COVID relief. About $350 billion of that was assigned to local and state governments. Uh, so the city of Inglewood did get some of those funds, and they were allocated by council in 2021. Um, so the ARPA fund allocation to utilities, um, so the storm um, water utility as well as water and sewer was a total of $4.2 million. 500,000 of that was assigned to the lead service line inventory effort that was completed last year. And then the remaining 3.7 million was split evenly between the water fund, the sewer fund and the storm water fund and was assigned to the old Hampton utilities project, which is um, the next item on the agenda to uh, discuss the, the uh, construction of that project. Um, so this that's what this table shows here is just that allocation. Um, next slide, please. Uh, during uh, the design phase of the old Hampton Utilities project, it was determined that the sewer line did not need to be re rehabilitated or uh, relocated as a part of this project. So um, we decided that we would just leave it in place. We 
do a uh, investigation of it, and um, it, it is still uh, in good shape. So we don't need to spend any of the ARPA funds on the sewer side. So we have discussed moving the ARPA funds from the sewer to the water fund um, in order to cover the water line construction portion of that project. So this table here shows kind of the net effect of that. So from the sewer fund, we'd be taking $1.233 million dollars um, and move it into the water fund, which then results in $2.466 million uh, um, to be assigned to the Old Hampton Utilities Project. And I will just mention on the ARPA uh, funds, they must be as, uh, allocated by the end of this year, so by December 31st, 2024, and then they must be spent by December 31st, 2026. So the uh, Old Hampton Utilities Project accomplishes that. <laughs> Would that all open it up for any questions? I have a question. Uh, so, uh, so that fund was equally divided up regardless of what was the need of the each city, correct? Or you mean just ARPA funds and just in general? In general yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, I don't know exactly how the, that was determined, um, how those funds were allocated to the state and local governments, but there were certain amounts that went to the city of Inglewood and then others. And other so, so the determination was based on we're going to divide one and three, but we didn't necessarily um, analyze the data and say, oh, this, the sewer lines need help. So we didn't know at that time. So when the, the funds were allocated to the to each of the utility funds, we didn't know at that time we had planned to do the sewer line, either move it or or rehabilitate it. Um, but during the design process that we've continued for the last two years, we didn't need to so, do that. So there is, in a way, there's an urgency to use that money. We put it somewhere so that way we can at least not lose it and be able That's to correct. utilize. And it, and it was assigned and it was identified as a priority project when the ARPA funds came into Inglewood, so we are just continuing with that, assigning it appropriately. So I would imagine if they later on the sewer lines need attention, then that fund has to come from somewhere else. Then it would come from the sewer enterprise fund, yes. Thank you. Sure. Other questions? Sarah, let, let me ask one, just as I'm thinking about that, the, the ARPA funds go I mean, from the Fed to the city of Inglewood. So the fact that Inglewood then allocated it between these funds, there isn't an issue of, well, they, these, you know, water and sewer are two different sets of users and rate payers. Um, so is that a correct way to look at it? That the, I mean, th these funds were again coming from the Fed through the city and they're not somehow encumbered in that respect. Yeah, I think that's a, a, a decent way to look like it. it. You know, it would have been allocated had we done the sewer um, line, it would have been allocated through the sewer fund, which is paid by the same internal city of Inglewood customers that pay for water service as well. Okay. That answered the question. I think so. Uh, good. Any, any further questions? Okay. Can I get a motion to approve? Uh, and recommend city council's approval of a Inglewood Utilities 2024 budget supplemental request in the amount of $1.233333 to transfer ARPA funds assigned to the Sewer Enterprise Fund or the Water Enterprise Fund. I'll move the motion. I'll second. All right, further discussion? All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. All right, five, uh, are we, I think we're on five still, right? <laughs> uh, five, uh, five E. And uh, Sarah mentioned the Old Hampton Utilities Improvements Project. Um, I personally am really excited to see this whole farm reconstruction. I've been working on it since I started here a year and a half or so ago. Um, so this has been, uh, this is in the area of Old Hampton between Broadway and Clarkson. Um, this has been a collaborative project with Public Works. Will continue to be. Um, it basically includes some large diameter storm and some uh, large box culvert for storm drainage, large diameter water line, I should say, and a, a box culvert for storm drainage. Again, since it, uh, Sarah mentioned, this is funded with ARPA funds. 
And this is an important uh, precursor to what the public course is doing with the uh, Old Hampton Complete Streets project, which is really going to transform that corridor. So um, we need to get the stuff underground done before they can do that. Um, so this is 3,400 feet of 18 inch water line um, and a lot of other smaller water lines and appurtenances, fire lines, meters, that sort of thing. Um, there's a large 48 by 60 box culvert, uh, some smaller stormwater piping associated with that, and some mantles and inlets to go ahead and carry that drainage away from the corridor. Um, this went to bid, invitation to bid July 2024. We got a pretty good response on it. Six contractors came back. Um, Timberwolf was the low bid. Um, they're actually a pretty impressive company out of Tulsa. Um, I've done some work in the state in Boulder, and the references check out, so we are decided to go with Timberwolf actually. Um, so the base bid on the entire project that includes the public works portion and the water department or utilities portion is $4.88 million. And of that, um, the actual cost of the water line construction is about $2.25 million. And so we're also asking for a 10% contingency on this. Um, there's probably a lot of stuff we don't know in there and it's in there, uh, just the nature of this kind of program. Or so the total authorization we're asking for is 2.475 million. questions? I have a question. Mm -hmm. Or two. <laughs> I'm sorry, I asked you that question. That's fine. Um, so I look at the beds, and the beds look like this company is about half of what is the up part of this. Mm -hmm. So they're quite a bit lower. Mm -hmm. So my question is, um, one, the um, guarantees of the companies backing up the work and how long do they back up the work? Two is the quality of the items they use. Mm -hmm. That's all laid out in our specs and our contract where um, there is on the water line a two-year warranty. I'm not 100% sure on the storm line what that warranty looks like. Um, I will say that, as I said, this company, well, construction bids have been fluctuating over the last three years a lot. Mm -hmm. And this company having, out of Tulsa, it's my sense that they've done essentially one big project in Colorado. I think they're trying to get a toehold in here. So they might have underbid a little bit. Um, it, but we see this kind of range typically in just about every project we bid out. There can be a 50% range in what contractors bring to us. So my next question is, so they have the background is on Tulsa. I would imagine Tulsa has a different um, ground and, and all of that. So their expertise with this kind of work um, how, what was your historical discovery of their performance? It, everything, like I said, we checked the reference with Boulder and they were very happy with this company. Boulder is very strict. <laughs> and I don't know their particular project, but this, this is going to be a very difficult project. Um, and um, they've done a lot of industrial type work, um, which fits in here. You know, so I, I feel comfortable that they're going to perform well. I can just add to that. When we assign this work, it's not just here you go work. We're going to be there. We're present. We're inspecting that work. If it's a high consequence main, they're going to run that process through probably me and through Cliff and Sarah to say, well, what specifically are you doing to make sure that you uh, that you do these things you ought to do if you're going to work on this high consequence line? So they have to get approvals and inspections. So it's not as if we say, here's the work, go do it, but we're involved in every no step. No one's covered, it's like, oops, we have Right, so yeah, we're there, and I'm going to want to be there, I'm going to miss it too. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, want, I want to after also thank you. I got to live with it for the next 50 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, and I want to thank you for being able to find the lower bed with the quality that is. Well, Public Works had a lot to do with that. Like I say, it's been a collaborative project, and looking <clears throat> forward to get it done, finally. Thank you.
for further discussion. All right, we'll move to the motion. Can I uh, get a motion for item 5E as written? I move. I'll second. <laughs> all right, any further discussion? All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. Thank you. Uh, we don't have any old business on the agenda tonight. Uh, any uh, any addition, staff choice additions? Um, there are not. I will mention that Peter is at the National Association uh, of Clean Water Agencies. Not I had to write that one down. Not full. He serves on the board there, um, and uh, they have their fall board meeting. So that is where he is today. Great. Uh, Board members choice. Uh, do any board members have anything they'd like to raise? I do, please. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Um, so I have a since Josh <laughs> you're here. May I ask this question? Sure. Uh, so I came in I think two or three times to the office and and um, I was really interested in this um Breda, uh, consideration and, and you were specifically on two of those meetings. Yes, I remember. And, and do you remember that there was so many questions about the um, instability or even um, uh, lack of manipulation of that research with Bredo? I remember the comments. Yeah, do you remember? I sure do. And, 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 and Zach also, um, prior, a year prior to that, gave me a reassurance that Bredo, who was part of the uh, research, and then it turned out af after that in the meeting that we had, together he wasn't part of that and then he was just toward the end of it he was involved in so then the, that one sheet of the report that he presented to me in that meeting we all had um, mm -hmm. that was full of flaws as I raised the question about that uh, very manipulated um, information so I just got this today in my email I was kind of very disappointed because I think I raised that um, before that, when we're using the, the people's money to invest in somewhere that not only is is not helpful, is actually is harmful, because the problem with this, and that's why I raised in the last meeting that that hundred eighty you know thousand dollars that we're getting from getting off du, uh, Dupont's lawsuit is because people are under impression that they're drinking safe water. And yet, we're giving them this tool called Breda, which is so false, it really doesn't even remove much, even with the first filter, yet alone with other filters that they use. It's such a, it's, it's, it's a distraction. I feel like it's, it's the carrot distracts from, from what's happening. And so yet, I see this, and I get, and I thought, you know, we had that really heart-to-heart -heart conversation about that we need to be conscious about what we present to people. People, it is our job in here to be present so that we can give people assurance that their drinking water is safe. And yet, I see this waste of money. And it, it is really bothersome to see Breda is making money. And, 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 I, just, and, and I, I just kind of overwhelmed with this fact that the cost to get that bread up, which I'm pretty sure is a lot, and I'm really interested how much money we think we spending to get that. I'm pretty sure it wasn't for free. Am I correct? That's correct. It's not, it's not yeah. for free. Yeah. So, and I don't remember in the meetings we ever had any discussion about that. And I and I remember as as a, as a as a board member, I've been since a year and a half, almost two years ago. I've been discussing this. I don't want to take the board's um, time, so therefore I put my personal time and showed up at the office and I discussed my concerns. Yeah. And yet I see this set up to, I never brought up in the meeting so the rest of the members can be involved with this decision and, and maybe making an educated decision for the rest of the citizen of Inglewood. And I feel like, um, so did I just waste my time or didn't I, wasn't I able to across a solid point that this is a problem because I think the cost of that, which I really know how much it was cost per residential and how much the cost of that is, is because if people were aware of that, how unhealthy that water is and how that bridge is not helping them in any shape or form, not even 0.01%. So 
Um, I think if that money was in, invested, I even offered that I will do negotiations so the citizens of Inglewood can actually have access to a reverse osmosis that at least it gives them safety. So maybe invest that money and they'll be able to have some sort of a coupon so they report they can go and get something that is safe, that it works, is functional. And it's not feeding a corporation that is not is in a business of deceiving people. Let me speak to that conversation that we had. So we had that conversation and I shared that with Peter. And I believe we responded, Peter and I, I think we were present, we responded with there's some requirement that we have to give those Brita filters out. Uh, per the state's regulation. And we're also following up with the Denver Water Model who gave those out as well. But just remember, and Sarah can speak more to that program, but just remember the intent of this is to give that filter in the meantime until we remove those uh, service lines. So if we disturb that, we provide that filter. But the overall goal is to make it safer, to make it better by removing every lead service line. And until we do that, we provide the option, I believe, for a Brita a filter. I do believe there's some requirements to do that. That's correct. So, so we are required, the EPA down to this, gives that down to the state, and the state requires us to give a Brita filter to every identified lead service line in the system. So the the money that we we're talking about last month, the $180,000 in settlement funds potentially available in the city of Inglewood, that's related to PFAS. So that that is likely not removed by a Brita filter. I don't know that. But the Brita filter is the only one on the market that is certified to remove lead. And that is why we are using it. Um, the cost per residence about $100. Um, I, I think that might, I'm, I'm guessing a little bit high. Um, and they are provided to each customer that has a confirmed lead service line. So when the contractor goes out, potholes identifies lead, they are given a Brita filter at that point in time. Um, but and, and that is following the state's regulation. That is following what Denver Water is doing for their program. And as you'll recall, we are actually ahead of the regulation for lead service lines. We have not had a, um, a hit on the system that's over the MCL for lead requiring action. So we are being proactive in getting all of the lead out of our system. Um, I really appreciate that, Sarah. It's like my, my frustration, it comes from the fact that, so you're saying that the state is this, this is not a volunteer following Denver because we have that decision. We don't want to follow Denver because look at Denver's water, it really sucks. <laughs> and and so I don't know how else to say. I, I visited Denver uh, Water Factory myself twice. Mm -hmm. um, but <laughs> uh, so I just, um, so, so this is coming from a state and, and, and the decision. And so the federal is controlling and true, this, this is through the fundings, am I correct? Yes, because they give us fundings and then they force us to follow a certain thing that is not actually. But I guarantee you, I looked at those reports that they send me and there is a huge flaw in that. They do not remove the lead and there is even, even that is questionable. So we spend hundred dollars. People are still not safe. And yet that money is wasted to a corporation that is just is so controlled over governmental regulation. My understanding is that. Am I correct? That I don't know. I can't speak to that as far as what. What we've done is made sure that we are providing the pitcher that is available on the market that is certified to remove lead. <clears throat> we, we can't necessarily verify that um, other than as we're required, that's, to. As we're required to do. Yeah. I appreciate you sharing that with me and, and, and I hope you understand my level of frustration because I, I do quite a bit of work on this, this kind of a health stuff and I know for a fact and I wish that um, we were in so much control as a city by, by such corruption, um, by regulations that is not working for us. And I'm hoping we can correct that once we get that 180,000. So we can actually tell, identify to people is like, you know, you invest a little bit of money, you, at least you have healthy drinking water while you're drinking and cooking, you know? So that way people make their own choices. And I'll just say, uh, I, I do understand your concerns. I did convey that concern. I just want, I want, I, that conversation. I enjoyed that conversation. I enjoyed those conversations. I, 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 I immediately made those concerns. I remember the response was, well, we don't really have a lot of say in our building to not provide these. We have to per those requirements. So we're not really making that decision to do so. We have to in order to get the lead lines out. We need to follow these guidelines so as to provide those filters. Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, I do want to say I do recognize you are putting in your so does I. I I'm not mm -hmm. trying to say that you guys are not doing your job. I'm just I'm just trying to reveal the <coughs> of that frustration that I have that that I really don't agree because I feel like we're making decisions for people that have no awareness about this. So thank you. Um, I, thank Marzon, you I just want to I just want to add, I was working at Denver Water at the time when, when they were pushing the state to adopt this alternative. And the whole reason this alternative exists is because there was a, there was a con corrosion control component of this that it made more sense for the overall water cycle to um, you know, seek this alternative lead service line removal. The, the people that worked on this project did the research, um, you know, are some of the, the smartest water folks, scientists, chemists that that I've met and had the opportunity to work with. And to me, to hear you kind of on the record um, saying it's it's a corrupt system or, you know, it did, people didn't do their due diligence, that that is uh, pretty deeply offensive to me as someone who worked with them throughout this process. So I just want to add that component to this, that, that very smart people work to, to approve these methods, to get it uh, adopted by the state and to have it as an alternative for um, some of the other lead options that existed. Uh, I'm sorry to tell you, you're taking this personal. Um, it has nothing to do with your business. Some of the smartest and most corrupt people in the world are the ones that are smartest. And I'm sorry you're taking a smartness and confusing it with consciousness. Consciousness um, is I, mean, if you're corrupt, different, I, different. It has nothing to do with smartness. Um, you're making and, and, I, and I, just to let you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm saying that right now we are getting regulated and I'm just stating the facts that we're getting regulated through federal and state, as Sarah said that. And I'm saying that- Can you that share as your technical state, background with the group, please? I, I, I think we're all curious on, on what your qualifications are to say my that- My background, I have four problem. degrees in biology, chemistry, accounting, and math. And I no, study- Not a lot. water. And, and, and my, what I'm saying that I'm really, really interested in health. So I do quite a bit of research and I did spend quite a bit of time and looking at Breda and the research that they had me has so much flaw in it. The research that Denver used. So I really, I'm not going after personal persons that they made the decision, but I am saying that these decisions that is removing the citizens of Inglewood out of that decision-making, but regulating them. That's what I'm saying. And that's a fact right now. If you're gonna and claim corruption, provide the board step in, please. Denver. But I'm pretty sure wonderful people also make mistakes. The smart people make mistakes too, Ty. Yeah, send us some proof of that. I'm sure the board would really like to see this this blatant corruption that you're um, going on really record at this point, I am not interested to have argument. I have the same right as you do to express what my concern is. I hope you can respect that. I do not. But that's okay. I can express why I am I can express my concerns. And maybe you can learn to live with that. Are there any other board members that would like to raise any issues tonight? I just have a quick question about the sure. McClellan Lake. Um, if people are trespassing there or it's just wide open, if somebody's attempting to do something to the water, who responds to that? Inglewood police or Littleton police? It is Littleton police, uh -huh. uh, usually through complaint. Uh, a lot of people, I've never had a situation where someone's tried to do something in the water, but people do fish in the yeah. gallon often. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of people around there who can see that, and they're very vocal about letting us know that. Yeah, we're, we're, I'm working with staff to what's the best way to manage that, whether it's cameras. Right now, it's usually kids fishing, so yeah. it hasn't come to the priority of we got to stop this. Uh, but it's Littleton police, and also that water, um, we don't necessarily not that we wouldn't prioritize safety for that water. We don't consume that water ourselves. That's water that gets pumped and sold. Oh, well, okay. We would still prioritize them, help them welfare, but, <laughs> but it's not Inglewood okay. water. I was, my son lives across the street and he's an Inglewood police officer. He's like, yeah. am I supposed to go to that? Or it's who does that? I'll yeah. let him know. <laughs> Thank Candy you. Candy wants to. <laughs> we wouldn't stop him. No, okay. <laughs> All right. Any. Any other board member want to exercise their choice? All right. Uh, the, uh, thank you, everyone, for your time. Uh, Council, thank you for um, doubling up tonight, given your other duties.
Uh, and with that, the meeting is adjourned. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.